hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, May 1st, 2020, and this is our weekly video. We're going to take a look and see how things went over on eBay last week in the Chinese and Asian art area. We'll look at a few things that are coming up uh, in the coming week that are closing. There's some good lots closing. Uh, take a peek at Katawiki, and we're going to talk a bit about uh, some things over from the, over on the global member pages that happened this week, and particularly the Christie sale. And uh, if, if those of you that, that watched it know it did quite well, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that because a lot of people have been wondering uh, what's the state of the Chinese market with all that's going on. Uh, it's crazy. And uh, so far, things look pretty pretty good, and the sale was held in Hong Kong. Uh, and that market still seems to be very interested. We're going to go over some prices because some of the prices were really surprising, very strong. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was uh, we've made a few changes on the uh, on the home page this week for making it a little easier for folks. Uh, change the uh, color patterns uh, on the right sides for uh, for for our, our our information. The auction houses are now all in yellow. We're doing the museums in green. And uh, just so you know, the, the Cleveland Museum of Art this week, we did a video on the, on the place, its history, uh, its uh, uh, original founders, and about how the collection really went through a massive buildup in its Asian art category after 1958, thanks to the uh, curator, who was Sherman Lee. And he was a scholar of art in all categories, but he was particularly fascinated by Chinese and Asian art. He was a brilliant, brilliant guy, one of the real, real top guys in the world. And uh, we're going to talk about how he uh, cobbled together uh, such a great collection, a great collection. He was also a fabulous author. If you have any of his books, you know what I mean. All right. And the other thing I wanted to mention was that this week we, we, we got a copy of this book right here, this yellow book that's over in the reference section. And... Um, it's this, Chinese Export Silver, written by Adrian von Furst, The Definitive Collector's Guide. This is a fantastic uh, book. It is a thousand pages long. It is full of Chinese marks. He goes into great depth about the, uh, the, uh, the connection between English silver and Chinese silver and how they were co-influencing one another, the designs and patterns. Uh, he, he lists out all of the different areas and towns and provinces where they, where they made silver and what the differences were. Uh, he, gets a, he does an enormous amount. There's an enormous number of marks on here. Uh, so if you have a piece of Chinese silver and you can't readily find the mark, it'll be in this book. And I will include a link to um, how you can get your own copy of it as a PDF if you want it. That's how he sells them. They're not expensive. They're like 15 bucks. And uh, if you're interested in Chinese silver, this, this is like the bargain of the year. But it's in the reference section, and, and you can, of course, browse it over there if you wish. And uh, if you're on the, our homepage and you're wondering where the reference books are, you come over here to bid them out right here, free auction catalogs and books. And you can go through it. There's about 535 uh, auction catalogs, books, and references on there right now. All right, now let's take a look and see what happened over on uh, the, uh, the newsletter page last week. There were some pretty good things. Not a lot of things closed this week um, uh, because uh, just the way I think some people were holding off and putting some things up. There was sort of a low ebb in listings uh, during the beginning of the shutdown everywhere. And now things seem to be coming back. And uh, as a lot of you know, Ching period, the, the seller over in, in Europe, he has a good, a good number of things up right now. And they're going to close on uh, uh, Sunday or Monday. And you want to check those out. The, the objects are doing quite well. But a couple of things, I w we'll get into that, but uh, uh, let's see here. This is uh, one of the things I wanted to point out. This was a pair of plates on Katawiki that we had picked from the unreserved lists. Uh, as, as I've said many times, we're focusing more on the unreserved lots than the reserved lots because they're the ones that people are able to buy. All right, now, it's a very, very pretty pl pair of plates. Kung Shi period, about eight or nine inches in diameter. They were overall in pretty good shape. I think one of them had a hairline or something. But at any rate, they went for 138 euros, which was pretty reasonable, I think, if you think about the prices of Kung Shi dishes in general. And then this one, they had another one up there. Uh, this one had a nick out of the uh, upper edge here, and I think that was about it. But overall, it was a good plate, nicely painted. Uh, I like the lappets going around the outside. And uh, this went for 150 euros, which is also a very good price. Uh, this is Right now, I think there's a lot of people that have their attention elsewhere for obvious reasons. And um, some of these things are, are turning out to be bargains. As I've said a million times, always leave a bid. 
If you don't have a Catawiki account yet, come over and get one. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's free. You just sign up. It's like eBay. But leave bids, all right, if you think that was a good price. And then over to this one, uh, this pair of plates, another pair went off, and they were also Kung Shi period, nicely done. Sort of a stock pattern, but, but, but well done, and it's a pair. And they went for uh, 203 euros with an expert estimate of 300 to 350, which I, I thought was about right. Uh, so somebody got them for well under the estimate and a very, very good value. So always the lesson, leave a bid. And then on to these. This was a, a very nice set of plates, pair of Kung Shi plates uh, that were put up by a seller here in the U.S. He had a number of things up last week that did pretty well. And he had one, one thing, I think, though, that was a steal, and we'll get to that. Uh, nice looking pair of Kang Shi dishes, beautifully done. Nice, uh, there's a better shot. Uh, a, a nice dark blue framing of the uh, of the precious objects running around the edge, uh, the two figures and so forth, the the swirling clouds and the way the rocks are done. This very nice classic Kang Shi shading of rocks. Uh, beautiful pair of plates, and they did well. They brought two thousand and seventy five dollars. Uh, and these these were uh, uh, not terribly big. These were uh, what were they? Eight inches or something? Eight and a half inches in diameter. Uh, so that was a very but a very uh, strong price, but very good quality. All right. And then on to this. This was the Harado uh, blue underglazed blue painted shell. The, uh, the Harado porcelain, as a lot of you know, was originated. It's Japanese, and they were first Harado wares were first made for the Japanese house for the imperial family. It started there on it's an island in southwest China, uh, Japan rather. And uh, but this is a beautiful one. It's shaped like a shell, nicely modeled. Uh, a very nice example. And uh, I got an email from the lady that bought it uh, uh, over overseas in in, in, your, in the UK. Uh, she bought this, and she also bought uh, interestingly. Um, uh, a very nice uh, Japanese plate we'd featured that was uh, a fixed price, price plate, early, early Arita. And she bought this, and she was, she was very, very happy. Uh, but this was a, a lovely example, and I think it was a steal for $232 for a good piece of Hirado. Because the figural forms, these small personal figural forms like this, are very desirable. And I think she got a great buy on it. Because right now, the world is paying attention to other things. And uh, if this had gone for six or $700, I wouldn't have been at all surprised. Okay, and then on to this. This was, I think, one of the great buys of the week. An absolutely stunning buy. It's a reverse painting on glass, Chinese export market, uh, done around probably the first half of the 19th century, 1830 to 50, judging by the quality of the work. Uh, the work on this was stupendous. And uh, if you look at the facial expressions, the bulging eyes are very, very three-dimensional. The hair, the whiskers and all the hair, the way the, the crowns are done, um, his, his startled look on his face. Uh, just a beautiful example. And we come over here, and uh, here's another shot uh, of the figure seated at a table. And you see this beautiful uh, 18th century silk hanging going around the front of the vestibule and these, these beautiful screens and uh, the decorations and the, and the very real, almost photorealistic uh, uh, aspect of the faces. Uh, just uh, really excellent, excellent, excellent work. All right, and this went for just $898. I think that was an amazing buy. Uh, I had sort of thought this would bring probably uh, $1,500 to $2,500. Wouldn't have been surprised to see it bring over 2500 because of the quality of the work. Always judged by the work, not by the age, not what it was, because every period had good and bad things that they made. They were all the same age, but some of the work was just so far superior. And the work on this was just absolutely great, and it had no damage and was in its original Chinese export frame. So bravo if one of you got that. And then on to this, the, uh, the Barber Bowl, 18th century Barber Bowl, clearly an export piece. That's what they were made for. Um, it's a, the pattern on the plate is sort of a stock pattern that you see on lots of 18th century blue and white dishes and, and, and services that were sent abroad. But it was, it was set up to be a barber's bowl, which makes it kind of interesting as a trade product. And it went, it went for an okay price, but not a crazy price, $256. All right, so whoever got that was a good buy as well. And then on to this. This was a very interesting vase. 
what it, it's a late 19th century vase, but it's done with in the Kung Shi shape. It's a shape known typically connected to the Kung Shi period. These mallet form vases. Uh, but what was very interesting about it was the 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 overall background decoration of it is this crashing wave pattern, which is usually uh, used on on 19th century porcelains. is often used, but it's usually just the border at the bottom of of a vase or or, or a jar. And this one, they, the the artist went ahead and did the whole thing with it, and then covered it with dragons. And there's a whole bunch of dragons on this. There's one here. There's one here. There's a couple up here, and they're all the way around it. And you have bats in the flaming pearl. It, it's just a, a a really interesting interesting example. Even though it's it's a later mid to late 19th century piece. Here's another shot of it. There it is. There's the pearl. And as you see, there are little dragon's tails coming up everywhere, going through the surf as they seek out the pearl. And uh, I think it. I think it was fairly reasonable. Uh, Seven hundred and fifty dollars. It was about fourteen, a little over fourteen inches tall, and uh, had been drilled as a lamp. It did have a hole in the bottom. It had been lamped. Um, let's go over here. There it is. And there's the bottom. It's clearly not a, a, a Kung Shi uh, vase. You know right away by the bottom of it. But uh, very nicely trimmed. This was a very carefully crafted uh, 19th century piece of porcelain. You can tell by how neatly the edges were all trimmed in and how it was done just so 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 tidily, as they say. And $750 got it. And that was, that was I think, a nice buy and an interesting buy. But it must have been stunning as a lamp. Wow. And then, on, speaking of silver, on to this, this uh, Chinese silver uh, box. Uh, I thought this was just, as, I, as if you saw the video last week, I thought this was just a fabulous piece of silver. Beautifully done, lots of detail. Uh, somebody had commented that they thought it might have been Japanese on the video. and I, It is, the mark is Chinese. But um, uh, I can see why they would think that. Uh, it, uh, that's not a criticism of their comment, because the Japanese were known for doing some very, very fine silver work in the Meiji period as well. But in any event, this was a heck of an example. And it sold for $7,800. Did really, really well. Uh, but it was a top-notch piece of silver, and uh, um, I'm not terribly shocked. I think I thought it would bring 3500 to 5000 And I guess some people got very excited and, and paid a bit more. But uh, it's maybe the best piece of Chinese silver I've seen on on eBay or Catawiki or anywhere on these online sites in probably a couple of years. Just a great piece. And then on to this, this charger. This turned out to be a very, very good buy. Visually, it looked, the way the profusion of uh, rim decoration was done, at a glance, it almost looks like Staffordshire. Because, but it was a, this is a Chinese plate, but it looks like the Staffordshire did a lot of plates like this where they, they got very densely did the rims, and the rims tended to be a bit on the broad side and so forth. But it was a Chinese piece. Uh, there's a, the back of it, nice-looking uh, foot rim on that, that ivory, white, very clean foot running around it. And I think somebody got a good buy. This thing was 13 inches tall. Uh, 13 inches wide and a little over, and uh, it ended up selling for 250, uh, $256. Uh, this was sold by Kung Shi over in Stockholm, Sweden, and I think that was a, a very nice buy. I really do. I think that was because it was an interesting plate. If you could go out and get the Staffordshire, you, with a little looking, you could find the Staffordshire example and uh, buy that and have them for comparison. Very interesting. And then along to this, the Wan Lee dish. This was just a sort of a, a typical Wan Lee plate, but the decoration was nice and crisp on it. Uh, the pattern is very, very well known, uh, and, and it's instantly recognizable and all that. But the, the, the tightness and quality of the decoration was quite good, and I think it did fairly well. It brought $402, all right? But it was in, it was in very, very almost perfect condition other than some minor rim fritting. These pieces, if they get so much as a hairline in them, you can pretty much take off about 75 to 80 percent of the value at times. But this one was just about perfect, and, and, and it, did a, it got a pretty good price. All righty. And uh, now on to this. We were, that was about it for the week, the things that sold that were worth talking about on eBay and things last week on Catawiki. Sort of an overview. Things are coming back. This, we're starting to see a bigger volume of things now coming on because people are stuck at home. They still want to uh, stay in business. They want to keep things moving along for when, the, when the, everything gets lifted and they get back to work. And a lot of dealers, I suspect, are selling stuff now to, to put together some capital to go back into the market in a week or two or a few weeks when uh, things get going again and, and you can start buying and trading and doing your work all right but this is on here right now this is very nice 18th century uh, enamel on biscuit uh, seated guanyin beautiful example this hasn't closed yet this is a nice piece 
Very nice piece. Uh, be- a- a good modeling. Uh, the the robes are nicely done. The facial expression is very, very good, uh, and so on and so forth. It's had a couple of losses. You can see it's missing a finger. Uh, check it for condition. But as an object, it has a, it's a nice form. This is Migalari has this up. It closes in four days. It's up to $114, uh, $143 or 114 pounds. He's a, he's a seller over in the U.K., so you get both prices. Uh, and we'll see how that does. But that's a nice example. And if you if you collect Chinese early, you know, 18th century and and, uh, and uh, Kangxi uh, figures, you want to check that out. It's a good one. And then over to this. This closes in a few days. I put this in because this is a nice vase, and it's only up to $41. Um, uh, I don't know the seller. They have they're fairly new. Uh, they are here in the states. But this is a good looking uh, uh, first half of the 19th century uh, figural vase. Uh, there's no calligraphy on it. It's often a, this pattern is often thought of to always come with those calligraphy panels. But the the decoration on it is very good. It's got a nice ruffled rim about it. Gold three gold chimeras running around it instead of the typical two. Uh, usually they're just flanking um, uh, on the on the on the on the shoulder on the uh, from the shoulder up up the neck of the vase. And here they've added three of them, which is kind of nice. And uh, but the the enameling and all that it looks very very good. It's up to just forty one dollars, and uh, it was, you might want to track that or hit that with a bid and see what see how you do. And then over to this fellow had a bunch of things. Oh this, uh, this is a nifty little uh, orange sepia export platter, but it's miniature. It's like a little painting. I I really think this is terrific. Uh, it's not it's not terribly it's not going to be awfully valuable. You won't have to go an arm and a leg to buy it, but. Uh, it's if, if you collect export porcelain, this is an interesting example because it's done exactly like platters that they made that were 12 to you know 18 inches, and it's miniaturized. It probably had a little some sort of little plate that sat on it or a, a small gravy or something. But it's a very nice piece. It was monogrammed at one point. It's worn, rubbed away a little bit, but unusual and has a very desirable uh, uh, color palette. And right now, that is just at $36, also closing in four days. So you want to check that out. That'll be in, All these things will be in the weekly newsletter page. And then on to this, a pair of these. Uh, these are nice, and they're loaded with calligraphy. It's the, the uh, ni- mid-19th century or a little later. Uh, to the backs of them are just clobbered up with uh, lots of script. Uh, and that usually bodes uh, for a high price on these, on these types of things with these Famille Rose uh, immortal figures on them and uh, with four chimeras running around the neck. And uh, right now it's up to $397 the, for the pair. And I think they're going to go a good bit beyond that, and they also have a few days to go. Uh, so we'll track that along. And uh, again, there's another nice-looking pair of these latter 19th century. These are interesting because these, these, this form with these dry, uh, dry glaze areas up here that were sort of meant to look like, like a bronze uh, coating with the masks and all that, uh, these were done, as everyone knows, in a very big variety of styles, lots of different ways they did these. Sometimes they were just done as a monochrome crackled background. Sometimes they did them with cafe au lait up here. Uh, sometimes they did them with underglazed blue only. Sometimes they did them Famille Rose. This one's got a bunch of them. It's got, it's got the crackle pattern down below, Famille Rose. It's got the, uh, it's, it's got the uh, uh, bronze uh, dressing areas broken up with Famille Rose panels, which is an interesting addition. And then the cafe au lait section begins on the upper half, breaks again with the cracked ice pattern, and then moves up to the rest. This this is sort of a, a, a Cadillac of one of these uh, vases. Uh, these were done in the you know post uh, 1875, 1880 to about 1900 typically, and these are just up to 95 dollars. <throat> I think they are good buy. And then on to this. This is something the Qing period has up. He has a bunch of things closing this week, and they'll all be in the newsletter. Uh, he gets great things, and he sells on uh, eBay uh, several times a year. Uh, he has a very, very good eye. He's, he's over in the, I believe he's in the Netherlands. And uh, this is a nice bronze, and it hasn't gone anywhere really yet. What's it up to? It's just up to $102. Closes on Monday. Qing period closes Monday. Uh, this nice 18th century, maybe earlier, uh, seated Guan Yin figure. And uh, this is one of those figures that originally, you can see these little mounts here. Originally, there were little probably bits of coral uh, stuck in there. It's Tibetan and uh, 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 turquoise stone and so forth. And they often fall out. It doesn't bother me. But this is a good example. The uh, symmetry and the curvilinear nature of this bronze is beautifully done. 
just beautifully done. Uh, has the, the, the very narrow waist, the very symmetrical face, look at the eyes cast downward, uh, just a, a, a beautiful, beautiful example, and particularly feminine. Um, uh, typically, the Guan Yin, uh, does, you know, the, the breast and the chest are not that noticeable. And in this one, they're quite noticeable. And uh, uh, because because originally the Guan Yin was, was not uh, exposed as a female, but was a, a male. And around the 13th or 14th century, they transitioned her to, to appear more feminine. Any rate, this is a, a, a very good little bronze. And it closes up in a couple of days. And if you're a bronze buyer, you want to look at this. This is a nice one. It looks like the surface... You can see a little bit of rubbed away here on the back. There's some uh, some patina that got knocked off, but overall, this looks like a good old example. Really does. Nice piece. And then uh, on uh, Katawiki is this another bronze that I wanted to point out. If you're a bronze buyer, this one's up to just 239 euros. Closes um, on Sunday. Uh, but this is also a nice example. Uh, very provincial. Very different than the last one. Uh, but here it is. There's some uh, script marks on it. You can see there's some uh, some of the lacquer that was put on the bronze is chipped away, uh, seated on a square plinth. Uh, there it is, holding a prayer stick. Here's the bottom. Nice piece. Nice little bronze. And uh, it's up to just 239 euros. Now, let's take a look and see what went on over at Christie's because they had their, it was an online only sale. Uh, this was their pavilion sale. And uh, here, here was the uh, listing for it. It ended on the 28th. And uh, if, you, if you don't follow them online, they, they have some pretty good online sales these days. You want to check them out. And uh, this wasn't a huge sale. I forget how many lots. There were 100 and something lots. Uh, lots a lot of nice little small jades. 80 lots, not even 100 lots. All right. And let, but let's take a look because the prices were, I think, quite good. For example, you had this really lovely little uh, Famille Rose uh, bell-shaped cup, Yongchen period, marked. It went for 375,000 Hong Kong, um, more than uh, almost three times its uh, more than three times its high estimate. Here it is. This is a lovely little cup, beautifully done, beautifully white, beautiful white porcelain. Uh, the the figures on it are simple and elegantly done. Uh, just a, a great thing. And it has the uh, hallmark on it of the Hall of Cultivating Harmony. And uh, that, that was, of course, the, the, the massive room in the Imperial Palace where they held ceremonies and so forth. And there it is, and it's done in black, which is quite unusual. Uh, uh, as you know, they're typically done either with colored enamels or, an undergla or overglazed blue enamels or underglazed blue in young ten pieces. This was a very unusual cup. <clears throat> and a lot of collectors apparently chased it and it ended up selling for 375,000 uh, 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 Hong Kong, which is, is roughly about 40, 43 or so thousand dollars, which I think maybe was a surprise for them. And then on to this, the Kangxi vase. This was a nice Rulu uh, Kangxi vase with a big killin on it. Uh, it was estimated at 200 to 300,000 Hong Kong and it ended up bringing smack in the middle at 250,000. Um, which is, uh, I don't know, what is it, about $34,000, $33,000 U.S. But beautiful example, really nice quality, very pure white uh, porcelain and so forth. And it did, it brought right in the range that they had estimated, which is a very positive sign. And there's a number of those on here. And they had very few buy-ins, I noticed. But the, the buy-in rate was uh, uh, fairly small. And here you have, they, they put up a couple of even 20th century pieces in here. And this was one of them, a Republic, early Republic period, Qing, very nice looking box. Um, and it had an inscription on it, uh, the Hall of the Manifest Harmony. Um, and uh, here is a... Uh, a, a good shot of it. It had very nice, even yellow enamel, so not too strong, not too bright, not too lemony in color. Uh, the the Famille Rose uh, peaches and so forth were nicely drawn. Uh, the border uh, around the box, this fret pattern was very, very strong. And uh, it did it did for just fine. It ended up selling from um, two and a half times its high estimate for 275,000 Hong Kong dollars, which is about, tw I don't know, 20, 22,000 dollars. Uh, which is pretty good for a Republican, uh, uh, Republican example. And then on to this. This was quite a thing, a Northern Sung Dynasty uh, pillow. And they gave it a very modest estimate, fifteen to 30,000 Hong Kong. It ended up selling for 437,000 Hong Kong. It went way over. And it's the picture of, of you know, the... Um, a figure, a recumbent figure, uh, it looks like Shao Lu or so. No, it's a turtle, excuse me. No, it's not, it's not him at all. That's a turtle. 
Oh, I like that. I just noticed it's a turtle. I didn't notice it was a turtle before. I thought it was a figure laying on his back. It's a turtle, and here's all the, the shell and so forth. A very interesting thing, then. It's a turtle with a lotus blossom on its back. And uh, it ended up going for 437000 Hong Kong, which is roughly, uh, uh, you divide that by 13, what is that? It's around uh, uh, 5 times 10, I don't know, $40,000, $35,000, or something. It had a very modest estimate, though. It had an estimate of a couple of thousand dollars. And, uh, but unusual form. That's a really unusual form. What's the bottom of this thing look like? Oh, yeah, look at that. Nicely done. Here we go. There you go. That's the bottom what they should look like. There it is. It's all sort of, you know, packed in. You can see the handwork around it shaping the foot. Then they trimmed it a little, and then uh, off it went to the kiln. Very nice. And uh, I wish I'd looked at that more before I put it in here. It was very interesting. And uh, then on to this. This did really well, too. This was a, a late 19th century, uh, late Qing period uh, uh, pot with a, an, uh, an apocryphal chin lung mark on it. And uh, but the decoration on it was really great. I love this. The creatures on it and over, over underglazed red enamels. Oh, there we go. And um, let's see if we get a better, another shot, a little clearer shot. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, blow this up. And here we have oh an elephant. So it had elephants and all these creatures running around it. Nice underglazed blue uh, trim, top and bottom. And up here, this was interesting. They did underglazed blue, but interspersed with a honeycomb pattern, underglazed red. Uh, here's uh, uh, butterflies coming down. And in the end, it did well. It brought 93,000 Hong Kong, uh, or more than double its high estimate. Uh, and again, uh, this was a, a late 19th century piece with an apocryphal chin lung mark on the bottom. And uh, there's no way anybody would, you know, I don't think anybody thought that was a, an authentic chin lung uh, piece with that m the way that mark is done in this, this sort of uh, unwhite, messed up, slightly dirty foot rim. Uh, but very typical in 19th century pieces. And it went for about 93,000 uh, Hong Kong or six or eight thousand dollars, which is a nice face, very pretty vase and not a lot of money. And then onto this, these were two of the things I thought I liked the best. And they went for 50,000 Hong Kong, which is, I don't know, $3,800 or something, not a lot, but a beautiful pair of uh, white porcelain cups. And the quality of these struck me as just really fabulous, stupendously well done, very nice relief carving in it. Um, on these biscuit pieces and this beautiful upper border and a matched pair of wine cups, just perfectly done. Here's a picture of the uh, of the uh, bottom. They have uh, Li Nai Shi marks on them. Let's see, they're impressed, I believe. Yeah, they're impressed into the bottom. There they are. And uh, again, very nice white porcelain, beautifully done. And as you know, they did these cups at that time in the 19th century, and they did. Uh, uh, Biscuit, uh, uh, they're, they're just a basically unglazed biscuit. Uh, they did biscuit uh, um, brush pots and all kinds of plaques and things. But these were lovely. These were really, really lovely, I thought. And then over to uh, this. Uh, there were a pair of transitional period sleeve vases on here. And I think these were great buys. They both went for under $5,000. Uh, nice examples. I didn't see a condition report on them, but we'll assume that they're okay. And uh, nice pieces. And I couldn't see much wrong with them. And uh, they went for, I think, a very, a fairly reasonable price for, for these. So, but, they, but the market is still showing some pretty good strength. And then on to this, a very nice copper red, very late 19th century vase. Good color, very nice color. Sold for 68,000 uh, Hong Kong over its estimate. So that's, a, you know, 68,000, about three to $4,000 US. But nicely done. It's got the, uh, the, the, the raised uh, knob around the neck and so forth. Um, very, you know, the color is very close to what you see on Kung Shi pieces. Uh, and again, not a crazy price, uh, around $4,500, $5,000. And then over here to this one, good looking Yong Chen Markin period dish. Uh, very nice. Uh, here it is. We'll blow it up. It has a Ming, pa it's done like a Ming dish. It has a Ming, in the Ming pattern, which they did do during the Yong Chen period. Did have a repair on the right hand side. It looks like a gold lacquer repair. And it ended up selling for 175000 Hong Kong with the repair. So it was two and a half times estimate with the repair, and that's significant to note because it, what it says is is that is it, you know, uh, good pieces uh, done, you know, uh, Qing pieces done with Ming in the Ming style and so forth. We're starting to see maybe a little more acceptance of some damage on certain period pieces, especially if they're marked in period. But that was that was an interesting thing to see. 
And then over here to this is this uh, very nice Zwantong uh, uh, mark, but it's apocryphal. So this is 20th century. They don't they sort of hedge on when it was done. The, the implication is it's probably later Republican, mid to late Republican. Sold for 23000 Hong Kong or about $1,700 or something um, uh, 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 at the low, below the low estimate. So apparently there wasn't much of a reserve on this. Uh, so it was about 18, maybe seven, eighteen hundred, nineteen hundred dollars. But good quality, and assuming it's, 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 they examined it very carefully, and that it's a republic piece. Does have uh, the, as I said, the mark on the bottom, but uh, they decided that the mark was not period, because very few of these marks are authentic on these. There are very few authentic Zhuangtong mark pieces. They just weren't. They just, but they were used later, often in the republic period. And then on to this. This was a real shocker to everybody. But it's a, it was a great Kesey panel. It looks like a watercolor scroll. This was Kesey work. Uh, very, very good quality. Very nicely done. The sepia threads that they used. Had a couple of nicks and bangs on it. But the quality of the painting was just excellent. All of the, of the work, all the way down rather, was nice. This is a Kesey. And uh, there you have the, uh, the rocky outcropping sewn in. The flowers all nicely shaded. No signature or anything. And it was estimated at twenty to thirty thousand Hong Kong, or you know, fourteen hundred to uh, uh, what is that? Fourteen hundred to twenty-three hundred dollars, somewhere in that range. Ended up selling for four hundred thousand Hong Kong, or about twenty-six thousand dollars, twenty-five thousand dollars, or tw thirty thousand actually. Uh, so, again, it shows you that there's still. Uh, some real bounce in the market over there for uh, for good things. And TC panels have been very popular among collectors for a long time. And uh, this is just an interesting lot I threw in. This was just a lot of 75 Chinese art reference books. They, as it says, they were mostly Christie's and Sotheby's catalogs, a couple of orientations in there. Sold for 17,000 Hong Kong, which is, uh, you know, uh, what is that round out to be? About $1,800. <clears throat> And then onto this, the rectangle at Yon Dynasty uh, uh, Xiao Pillow. Uh, a very nice one, though. It was a good-looking example. Had a I like the fact that it had a figure overlooking a pond with a, with a duck in it. And I like the bamboo leaves around the side. And uh, I like the flowers on the end. This is a nice piece. And uh, in the end, it uh, went over its estimate by about 50%, uh, up to 40000 Hong Kong, or roughly, you know, $3,000 or so. But if you like the on uh, pieces, that was a pretty good one. And then the last thing we'll look at is this, is this turquoise bottle vase. Uh, very pretty, very, very pretty vase. Uh, no mark, uh, but beautiful glaze, beautifully even. This thing just glowed. It had that, that lovely, uh, very fine crackle pattern that you see often on these uh, 19th century examples. They almost look like, uh, like fish row, very tight little... Uh, 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 crackle all the way down the piece and then you have a slight thickening where the glaze ran down and uh, thickened up and rolled a bit on the foot which is very normal it's how it should be and sold for 47,000 Hong Kong uh, which was uh, uh, right sort of in the mid upper range of its estimate of five to seven thousand dollars US good size vase 14 and a, a 14 inches and an eighth tall call it 14 uh, so it ended up selling in the end in U.S. dollars around $6,800, something like that. All right. And so, so this is a positive sign for the market because I, I've been asked a bunch of times. I've even gotten emails from folks. They're just wondering, what do you think? What do you, what do you think is going to happen? And I said, I don't know. You don't know in, the, in these crazy times. I'm, I, I tend to be an optimist, so I always think things will work out. But uh, um, I think this, this bodes well, considering there's still a shutdown, there's still all this other stuff going on in the world, and people are still on the sidelines with money to buy when the time is right. And that's a very positive thing for everybody. And it's good for collectors, it's encouraging for them, and it's good for dealers, gets them back into the market when this thing is over, and uh, keep shopping. All right. That's it. If you haven't subscribed to us yet here on YouTube, please do. And if you've never been over to bitamount.com, come over. We have a weekly newsletter, the Catawiki page, global member pages. You can subscribe to the newsletter page for free. We'll let you know when we update it every Friday and all that good stuff. And we'll see you all next week. And uh, have a fabulous weekend. And um, uh, we'll see you uh, the next time around. Okay. Thank you all. Bye-bye.